All right, in this video, I wanted to go over five tips and tricks to help you work more efficiently and perhaps give you fewer headaches while working in Cinema 4D. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are. I'm just in one of the example scenes here, specifically the living room scene. Made a few changes to, just to demonstrate um, these techniques, these uh, tricks, but let's go ahead and dive in. The first is going to be in our preferences. So if you go edit and then preferences, in the file section, we have the ability to auto save our files. And we can check that on. You can tell Cinema 4D how often you want it to save and tell it how many files you want it to be able to create. Now these aren't bad settings by default. I personally prefer to bump this up to say every 15 minutes, because that way if I have a large file, it won't lock up Cinema 4D or freeze for a few seconds while it saves. And I also like to limit the number of copies to say five, so that way it limits how much hard drive space it can take. So that is my first tip and probably the most important. Um, if you've ever lost uh, a file, you know how devastating that can be. So being able to go back to previous versions, to go back more than you can undo, can hopefully save the day. Um, so that is uh, the first one, though it is no replacement for saving yourself or even saving incrementally. All right. For the second one, wanted to talk about how to replace materials. So here I have a light version of, um, say, a material like this, where I want to swap a, a lighter wood for a darker wood. And what you can do is if you have this material selected here, hold Alt or Option, you can drag and drop it on top of the material you want it to replace. And what that will do is it replaces that material. Anything that had that previous material now gets this one. Any changes you had made in the material tag, like a selection, like a projection, will also be updated. So um, I'll do that one more time. You can see the switch from the dark material to um, a lighter material. And so once again, going to have this material selected, hold Alt or Option and drag and drop it onto the material you would like to replace. This can be very helpful if you're trying to go from one renderer to another. Um, and makes the conversion process that much easier. All right, the next one is also material related and it's in the edit menu here. We have a delete unused uh, or even duplicate materials, but I personally use unused um, more often. Now I did just duplicate a couple of materials here such as the aluminum, the apple, things like that. But any material that doesn't have anything applied to it or it hasn't been applied. So we'll have nothing here in the assignment section um, like the wood dark, like this version of the aluminum um, will get deleted. So once I do delete unused materials, you can see it cleans that up a bit and that can just kind of clean up our material manager um, and get rid of materials perhaps we were just experimenting with. Now, a uh, little bit of warning about this one. If you do use Octane, be very careful with this if you use mixed materials, since the individual materials inside a mixed material don't um, you know, show that they're applied to anything while the mixed material does. Okay, so that deals with that one. This next one um, deals with if you want to select something, say in your perspective view, um, and you are having a hard time finding it in your object manager. Um, so let's say you have a really, really long object manager, maybe you have a CAD file or something, um, and it can be hard to find that object in your object manager, especially if things aren't very well organized. Well, just like how in your perspective view, you can hit S to say frame selected, in your object manager, you can do that as well. You can hit S and it will find whatever object you have selected here. Now this can get a little bit tricky if you have a complex hierarchy. You can see it actually chose the symmetry object and not the cube itself, but this can definitely, definitely help um, you find objects if your object manager is not organized. Now, ultimately everything should be organized and this scene is a very good example of that. Um, you can see how all this stuff, you know, can be collapsed and uh, navigated quite easily and quickly. And that's exactly what you want to have in your own files. But as you're getting to this point, if you need to find something that you're able to select in your perspective view, you can hit S and it will find it right there. So last but not least, I wanted to show you how you can um, speed up 
creating a parent um, or creating a hierarchy here. So for instance, if I wanted to put this chair in a subdivision surface, I could hold Alt or Option and click on subdivision surface and it will put all of that inside the subdivision surface. It'll make the subdivision surface um, the parent. Okay, so that can be really helpful, especially with you know putting things in cloners or extrude subdivision surfaces, holding down Alt or Option will automatically put whatever you have selected inside of that new object. Along those same lines, if you hold Shift and create something, it is going to make it a child of what you have selected. So for instance, um, I don't, let's see what we got here. If I wanted to create a deformer, I would hold Shift, create the deformer, it now becomes a child of whatever I had selected, and I can move on to fit the parent and working with the, this deformer however I would like. So that also can help speed things up, because that way you don't have to go up and down your object manager to find those objects, parent them, all that type of stuff. So those are my five tips and tricks to help you work quicker, more efficiently in Cinema 4D, as well as cause fewer headaches. Um, let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything else you would like me to show, uh, and that will do it.